great. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Um, you're about to see Flexin. And we've been traveling all over the world, uh, uh, sharing this piece with people everywhere. And one of the aspects of this piece is that we've been able to invite incredible people, community leaders, um, people fighting for justice in various ways to come and have conversations with us about the work they're doing in the community. When we started this piece, oh, by the way, my name is Charlotte Braithwaite. I'm one of the directors, thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, one of the directors working with the incredible Peter Sellers and that man over there, Reg Rock Gray. Yeah, on flexing. And uh, we're here today with Dennis Powell, the president of the NAACP of Berkshire County. Also, we have here the Honorable J uh, Jay Blitzman, the first justice of Mass Massachusetts Juvenile Court. Oh, Middlesex County, excuse me, excuse me. My chief would be very upset with that promotion. And we have Gwendolyn Hampton Van Sant, co-founder and executive director of Multicultural Bridge. Yes. And, you know, the work started in the wake of the Michael Brown killing and, you know, and the Black Lives Matters uh, movement starting. Also, Eric Gardner um, being killed by the NYPD. And so that, those events that started us off in our rehearsal process two years ago, you know, have continued to grow and to build. And the Black Lives Matters movement is the most important movement that's happening in this country today because it's bringing up the fact that an, a, a necessary conversation conversation is essential to happen in this country when we're talking about race and social justice. And so in the piece today, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit, um, you'll see the dancers are really creating these pieces out of their own life experiences, but they're also um, allowing us to see it and to understand what they're doing through incredible virtuosic movement and a style that Reg is one of the co-founders of, which is flexing. And Reg, um, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, how flexing started and, and how essentially one of the most amazing things that I've um, been bare to witness in the uh, evolution of this piece is the incredible community engagement that has happened that is going on around flexing. And so can you talk a little bit about that and, you know, and living in uh, East New York and Brooklyn? Well, first of all, hello, Chuck Gaspillo. How you guys doing? <laughs> great, great, great. I hope y'all got, got a lot of energy this, like this, morning, this morning or this afternoon, rather, right? Y'all got a lot of energy today? Good. No, nah, no, nah, it's not a lot of energy. Y'all got a lot of energy today? That's what I'm talking about. That's what we need, that's what we need. But um, just to talk a little bit about flexing and exactly what it is and stuff like that. Um, flexing is, is a dance culture. Um, it's a dance, um, it's a, it's a dance that has a variety of, of different styles involved in it. We have pausing, we have uh, get low, bone breaking, hat tricks, punch lines, connecting, and like all these different styles make up flexing. Like when you say what is flexing, it's like saying what is hip hop. They both have their own things to it. Um, the culture of flexing, uh, come, it, come, it pretty much draws from like the Jamaican culture of, of Bruck Up, dance hall, all like in that realm. Um, and creating flexing, is something that I guess one of the things that you just don't know you're gonna do because it's not it wasn't in the beginning it wasn't for everybody it was just for the it was just for my, my dance crew and we was creating this dance on this show called Flex in Brooklyn that um, we didn't know was gonna take it was gonna pretty much take off the way it did because we wanted to uh, this it was just, it was a dance competition on Flex in Brooklyn and we wanted to beat everybody in the competition obviously right <laughs> that's what it's for so um, we was just doing it we was doing it for us. And then um, as we kept doing this dance style, like our dance styles, um, people started to pretty much uh, relate and, and just take it on for themselves and say, well, you know what? Well, I'm gonna do that style. I'm gonna do this style. They start doing the styles that we were doing on the show. And it happened all over Brooklyn, all over Brooklyn. And it's like, it, it, it became a phenomenon. And it was like, okay, well, what can we do? You know, <laughs> everyone started doing this, uh, the dance, our dance styles on the stage. So, the only thing we could do was pretty much help evolve the style and help teach the style the right way, but you know, so it won't be done or it won't get lost. So um, that's pretty much like how this, the dance style really started. Right, that's the short version. Because if I tell you the long version, we'll be here all day. <laughs> but that's the short version of how the uh, you know how the style started pretty much started started to build. 
Fantastic. And so let's get right into it. Dennis, do you want to start us off? Um, let, you know, the questions, I'm not going to ask a lot of questions, but basically what we want to do is just understand who you are, what you're doing, what your work is, and then what are the alternatives for the future? Yeah? Welcome, every. Hello? Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dennis Powell. I am the director of the Berkshire County unit of the NAACP. Uh, retired six times, <laughs> working on my seventh. Uh, basically, I'm really uh, hardcore concern about the school to prison pipeline that exists here in the state of Massachusetts and especially in Berkshire County. So I've really uh, given this a lot of my uh, attention and that's where all my energy and everything uh, is being placed uh, right now. Uh, to see a picture of uh, uh, a youngster who had to stand on a milk carton just so he could be fingerprinted just went right to my gut. So it's serious, it exists, and we've got to stamp it out. And so hopefully, um, I'm, I'm really pleased that the, the, the arts have taken up this uh, as a uh, way to get the message uh, out to everyone. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I came a long way uh, here. I'm from Queens originally, so I came a long way uh, here to meet uh, my new brother from, uh, from Brooklyn. How you doing? Uh, I'm the first justice for Middlesex County in Massachusetts in juvenile court. Uh, uh, prior to becoming a, uh, a judge, I uh, represented young people. I was a public defender for the better part of 20 years, and I ran a youth advocacy project in Roxbury, which, is, which became the template for the creation of a national defenders unit. Uh, and uh, my work then and my work now, since I've been a judge going on, it's been 20 years, has been focused on issues that are very related to racial and educational equity. Uh, so, you know, Dennis mentioned uh, the school to prison pipeline. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's not a Massachusetts phenomenon, it's a national reality. Uh, and what's happened, unfortunately, is that uh, many youth, predominantly, unfortunately, uh, youth of color, uh, have been referred increasingly by schools to juvenile justice. The unintended consequence of the post-Columbine uh, atmosphere of apprehension in which school police were placed in schools in conjunction with the expansion of zero tolerance constructs. So a lot of my work now has been focused on collaborative dialogue to redress these issues using data, research, because the numbers are real. Uh, youth of color are three to five times more likely to be suspended in school, uh, and that obviously has a, tr a, a tremendous uh, correlation in terms of who, whom we see in court. Children who don't graduate high school are eight times more likely to get arrested later than kids who do graduate. So there's a tremendous public safety dimension. The good news is that research shows that if we work together collaboratively, there are ways to uh, redress these phenomena. So a lot of my work now is with this uh, organization called the Juvenile Attention Alternative Initiative. We use data, uh, we use research, we have collaborative dialogue. We get the district attorney together, the police, school educators, and we try to create memoranda of understanding so that when something happens, we have a conversation. My current focus is on restorative justice. Uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with it, but what I love about restorative justice, it's, uh, it's about uh, what I was about when I was a public defender, giving voice to youth. It's a non-hierarchical circle in which children, young people are heard. Uh, doesn't matter if you're the principal or the judge or the janitor. Everybody has to listen to each other reflectively. You can't interrupt each other. You build community and children become part of the solution instead of eternally being uh, viewed as the problem, which unfortunately has been the traditional paradigm, uh, the type of thing that uh, Michelle Alexander writes so eloquently about in the new Jim Crow. So the good news is uh, there are things we can do, 
Uh, now we all have to share the urgency to speak with each other and really listen and hear each other uh, and, let, uh, and, and allow uh, our children to really be heard, to give them voice. Fantastic. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm, I am Gwendolyn Hampton Van Sant. As you heard, I'm the CEO and founding director of Multicultural Bridge. And I'm also the director of equity and inclusion at Bard College at Simon's Rock, um, my alma mater. And so you asked today for us to talk about our personal story. And I'm really mindful because all the new students are entering Bard College as we speak. And so I was brought back to when I came here to New England at 15 as a young African-American girl really excited about starting my college career early. And I can list the barriers that I encountered. You know, I went from being this really great scholar, spelling bee champion in Virginia Beach to just this, you know, kind of in the way person in college. And my dreams were crushed really quickly. So my work right now is really about bringing what we've done in Multicultural Bridge and in Berkshire County and the schools to my alma mater and having everybody feel like they're engaged and that they matter and that they have a space on campus. And, um, and we do that through restorative practices. So it works outside of the justice system where when any, any really, thank you, like my snacks. Um, so we do that by any harm that's done on campus, any microaggression, my commitment is that we will sit down and circle up and have each of us be held accountable for the impact on another individual. And by that, I think we'll shift the culture on the campus. And I hope that many campuses across the nation do the same. Um, and then we skip back to the work at Multicultural Bridge. This is exactly what Bridge is about, is the community-based initiatives. It's sitting down and having conversations about race. Um, we started back in 2009 with the Department of Justice supporting us and beginning dialogues on race. And I just can't tell you the changes that we've seen. So some of the places where we can go, we've already gone there. We didn't have a Dennis Powell, a president of the NAACP, when Bridge started. And we didn't have the Lift Every Voice celebration of Berkshire African American culture that Jacob's Pillow has been a major part of. So it, I have a lot of excitement, and I'm inspired by everybody here today, and to have this, have Jacob's Pillow take this to the next level. Great, thank you. So, you know, this dance style flexing is really about the future. It's about uh, an innovative dance style that is really speaking about a community, what people are experiencing, how they move their bodies to fluidly like move through whatever situations come up in their lives. And so what I'm interested to hear from you all is like, what do you, how do you see the future? Like what would your ideal future be when we're talking about social justice? Because I think right now there's a lot of rhetoric and conversation around like what is, but like, how do we get, what do we see in the future? What kind of future would we like to see? Can I start with that? Yes, please. So, uh, one of the things that uh, attracted me uh, to coming here today, in addition to the free lunch, uh, <laughs> uh, was the vision uh, of seeing authentic, uh, some authenticity from young people, giving voice to young people. You know, I know historically, uh, in, uh, in the court system, we've had a very hierarchical uh, approach. Uh, uh, and we have to embrace more of a due process model, which is really hearing from kids. That's what it really means. Uh, there's no dichotomy between rehabilitation and due process. Due process is just a fancy word for saying being heard, fundamental fairness, really listening to, you, to young people so we can encourage what we call now positive youth development, engaging in pro-social activities where they learn important life skills. And again, giving voice you know, to, 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 uh, to young people. So whether it's through the arts, whether it's uh, through actually uh, providing real access uh, uh, to justice, uh, the way we engage with, with young people, is something we can really, really do. Uh, but we also have to think more uh, globally about infrastructure. We've got to really redress the realities of residential segregation uh, and the consequences this has had on inadequate public uh, education. Uh, and I want to, uh, I'll end up with uh, restorative justice. Because, you know, we talk a lot now about uh, how we view the other uh, in our society, uh, people in community, police. We need to sit down with each other and really have the hard conversation about race, implicit bias, structural racism, and really not be afraid to hear from each other. So, you know, we were talking at lunch, you know, a police officer holds a sign up that says, um, Blue, uh, blue matters, black
black, black matters, another, another sign. I think you used the phrase, let's get beyond the rhetoric to really listening to each other's shared experience and acknowledge the, uh, the reality of our history and really, really having a dialogue with each other. We've been afraid to do that. It's too easy to hide behind posturing and, sl and uh, sloganeering. All right. Um, so where do we go from here? I don't know, my ideal? I, I believe the restorative practice is one avenue. Um, I was saying earlier today uh, that all of our humanity is wrapped up in restoring and repairing what structural racism and slavery and capitalism has done to all of us. It's not about the other. So if you're white, it's not about what happened to the black people, and it's black people, it's not about what the white people did to us. We're all, it's all of our humanity wrapped up together. So those conversations have to happen, and they have to happen in circles. They have to happen at your dinner tables. They have to happen at your work um, water coolers, you know, wherever you can do it, wherever you hear something, confront it. Take a little bit of time to have a conversation and take a deeper, deeper dive. And I think that that's really important that it just becomes normal for us to address it, that the shame and the fragility and all those things that they go out the window. We, we were born into this, everybody in this room today, we were all born into it, but we can do something about shifting it. And along with that, um, I, I guess we're all really focused on the children, um, but we have, Bridge has a program, Happiness Toolbox, because I've been really excited about the positive education movement and how they're focused globally on education reform. So Google that if you haven't heard about it. Um, but being able to educate uh, students on resilience and for them to see how, what they have inside of them and it's all gold and it doesn't matter where you're born, that we all have strengths that we can build on. I think that that's a really important skill and resource and Bridge has been working on that throughout Berkshire County and the schools and it's been really powerful. And, and with that, if any of you live in the Berkshires, we invite you to mentor students in our schools because the Happiness Toolbox has a mentor component. Thank you. Yes, I think uh, the first thing we, we have to eliminate if we're going to move forward, and it's a very short word, but it's a very powerful word, we have to eliminate hate. We have to stamp out hate because most of what our communities are facing, are involved in, that's the basis. That's where it starts. And when you ask someone, why do you hate, they can't even tell you. We know it's a taught behavior. No one's born hating. When the doctor slapped me so I could have breath, I didn't slap him back. Okay, Because I knew it was a good thing. That's where we've got to start. With respects to our young, it's just not enough for us to listen. We have to hear. And then once we hear, we have to have action. Our young are tired of talking and everybody doing this. And when they leave the room, that's the end of it. And that's why the young get so discouraged and frustrated. I'm not young, I get discouraged and frustrated. Because if we're going to take the time to have them at the table, then let's really show that we support what they're saying, we value what they're saying, and we're willing to move on that. It's their world. I'm checking out. I don't know what the date is, but this is why the young is so important. And it's our responsibility to them. They're a lot smarter than I was when I was at that age. They're going to ask questions. Sometimes we have to, when we're being challenged, not take it personal. Yes, when I was growing up and a police officer said, move along, I moved along. Today, young people want to know, well, why do I have to move along? I wasn't doing anything. And it's that why and that questioning that starts the problem. That's what starts the problem, okay? Because I'm an officer, you're not supposed to ask me why. You're not supposed to challenge me. But it's hard. 
when you're looking at a human being who has done absolutely nothing, and you, because you're capable and able of telling them to move along, you tell them to move along. Right. So we've got to listen. We've got to convince our young people that we are interested, we do understand, and we want to take action. Thank you. So what you're going to see tonight is a piece that is challenging all the kind of Hollywood produced, you know, images that we get of young black and brown uh, people in the world. And we're going to see like fathers, we're going to see people with love and we're going to see people like moving and, and showing themselves as human beings. And I think tonight, you know, um, Reg, maybe you can talk a little bit more about bone breaking, about pausing, which you you created about all of that, just what people are going to see tonight. Well, today people are going to see different styles. We're going to see, um, they're going to see gliding, um, being able to just be smooth in certain situations, being able to glide through any situations that, uh, that may occur and be smooth with it. Um, you're going to see connecting, being able to find different connections in the world and, and you know, go under and lower, under, you know, above and under the radar. Uh, you're going to see of the get low style, where you will see dancers go across the stage on their knees, on their backs, you know, moving through time like you've never seen them before because they're not standing there on their knees, just moving, staying low. You're gonna see uh, pausing, um, uh, pretty much just like putting play and pause on life. You know, it's like, like, it's like you wanna, you're gonna like you put, watch a VCR and you see a glitch. You know, you're gonna see those different things. You're gonna see, um, you no know, hat tricks, punch lines, so many different styles. A bone breaking, for instance, one of the most popular ones, um, breaking your body down and kind of reconstructing yourself and being able to say, well, I can stand for something. You know, these are different styles that um, pretty much resonate in flexing and, and that really hold flexing together, you know, and plus the foundation that we are, uh, of, of course, the Jamaican dancers that we all started. So. Um, yeah, it's gonna get real crazy, guys. And just keep your eyes open, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Don't get crazy. Don't, don't just say, oh, don't turn away because you might miss something and don't blink too fast, <laughs> all right? We got, um, of course, it might, like I said, it might get really hot in here, right? So we got the exits right here. You see the exits right there? Don't run out. <laughs> they're right there, they're right there, and they're two in the back right there. All right, well, three in the back, there we go. Make sure y'all check that out. And um, I don't know, I think we're ready to go. We're ready to dance? Yeah, so just a couple of things. Yeah, just a couple of things before we start. Exactly, you seem like an amazing audience. So we're from New York, and in New York we have this thing, if you see something, say something. So tonight, right. if you see something that you like on stage, shout, yell, scream, applaud, whatever. We like that. That Be makes the performance expressive. better. <laughs> this show is completely improvised. Like jazz, there are a few meeting points, but in between those meeting points, the show is completely improvised. So you're gonna see something fresh, something new. So please react. Um, normally, Jacob's Pillow plays an announcement right now that tells you to turn off your phones. We would actually like you to turn on your phones, keep your cameras on, <laughs> and if you see something you like, film it, photograph, it and hashtag flexing, hashtag <laughs> Jacob's Pillow, right? <laughs> great. And we're going to get started, so have a great night, all right? Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.